Hi, welcome to the uh, Regional Support Centre for the North West uh, resource created by myself for Safer Internet Day, uh, released on the 1st of February so that you can evaluate it before we actually uh, set it, uh, before the actual day. Uh, hopefully you'll find it useful. Today we're going to have a look at uh, your e-reputation and we've got on screen at the moment uh, an American Indian proverb that actually states quite simply, we will be known forever by the tracks we leave. Uh, the image has been there a little while now and I wonder if you can actually work out what those are tracks of. Um, I'll try and remember to tell you at the end, if not, uh, email me and I'll tell you... Um, <laughs> in a response to your email. OK, let's make a start. Uh, Save for Internet Day 2012. It's the second day of the second week of the second month every single year. Uh, so this year it's on the 7th of February 2012. And the first slide here, and I'm sure you can read it yourself, is all about the fact that we have responsibilities for others. Uh, and if we want to make sure that our loved ones and our friends' loved ones, etc., are safe, then we need to make sure that we know what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing as far as uh, using new and emerging technologies are concerned. Obviously, Safer Internet Day is about using the internet, whether it's on your mobile phones and or uh, on PCs, on iPads, on Androids, and, and the list will go on and on. So what are you going to do to make sure that these people, your loved ones, are actually safe uh, when they use social media and other technologies? And don't forget the older generation as well, uh, and I include myself within the older generation. Uh, how many of you uh, who are watching this helped relations who are older than you, who uh, I suppose if you're a learner, some of your practitioners may not be as familiar with technology as you are. And you may actually help your teachers, your grandparents and other relations to set up Skype um, chat rooms etc. Uh, what have you done to make sure that they are safe when they're using these technologies that you are helping them to, to access? I'm sure that you've told them as it says on this screen that everything that they say and do online can have an impact on their reputation. I think a lot of people are very surprised at how much information there is about them on the internet uh, and even those who don't think they're on there at all, if they do a search in Google or any other search engine, there are others, um, they will find that there is information that's been posted by friends and or by uh, relations and other people. The impact it has on them and how they are perceived as an individual or as a professional, uh, doesn't matter what employment they're in, can make a, a big, big difference. The internet and the reputation is great news when you've got great news. Um, as you'll see here with some research, and the link is at the bottom of the screen that uh, is uh, on uh, view at the moment, it's repler.com, and you'll find that on every one of these screens, if you're looking at the video version and not that's just listening to the audio, you'll find that there are links to the sources where this data is collected. But as it says here, 91% of recruiters and HR professionals use social networking sites to screen either a prospective learner going on to colleges, universities, etc., or prospective employees and again from the research that I've looked at and, and I've communicated at other events that we've done um, it tends to be Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Google Plus are the main ones that are used by the recruiters and HR professionals to, to have a shifty at what these people are like. Now, I'm hoping, and I should have checked this before I started, that um, this video is going to play um, 
But basically, uh, this video is looking very closely at the privacy and reputation of online students. Everybody has a dream. I had mine. My dream is to play baseball for a university. My favorite university growing up as a kid. Uh, so every day I was there after school, you know, taking cuts. Boom, boom, just taking cuts, just trying to, you know, get, I guess, cut closer to my dream, you know? So, uh, you know, one day I come back, you know, from practice, and I run to the mailbox. I, I, get, a, I get a letter in the mail. You got accepted, you're on the baseball team, everything is going awesome. Finally, I got into my school of my choice, I'm playing baseball for it, you know, it's a dream come true. Everything is working so well. So here I am, just some small town kid at some big time university, and I'm just like wide eyed going crazy, you know? Just having a ball with everything. So, my first semester, one day after practice, you know, a bunch of the guys were going out to a party, and I'm like, all right, cool. You know, sounds like something to do. So here we are, we go to the party, you know, somebody hands me a beer. I'm like, okay, it's my first college party, you know, why not? So you know, I take one down, boom, first beer. You know, he hands me another, oh, come on, keep going. All right, boom, another one. And I probably had a few too many beers and, you know, I'm starting to act dumb. I'm just like, oh, like, what's up, taking pictures, and got my beer, it's like, oh, you want that? Like, you know, just being dumb, because I'm, I'm drunk, I'm starting to act crazy, you know. So a buddy of mine's walking around with his camera phone, just taking pictures of everybody acting dumb, and then here he goes, he gets a picture, snaps it. I got a beer in my hand. So, a few days later, I find out this picture's on the internet, and everyone's seen it. Everyone sees it. You know, baseball friends, my coach. She, I mean, I didn't even think my mom saw it. So here I am, everything taken away. Just, just like that. Scholarship, gone. Baseball, gone. School, gone. My dream, gone. All because of some picture on a camera phone. Everything I worked for, every day after school, gone. Okay, um, that's just one side of the picture. It, it's food for thought for those of you who are watching. But to every positive, there is a negative and the other way around. So let's just have a quick look at something a little bit more positive. Hey, my name is Greg. Uh, I just want to share experience uh, of when I was in high school. I started this blog. I didn't quite know what to post on the blog. Uh, a lot of my friends were posting pictures of them chugging beers and, and hanging out with friends partying and stuff. I kind of wanted to make mine more personal. So I started posting things that I thought people cared about. Uh, things that my peers cared about and, and positive stuff, uh, you know, but I also wanted to make it influential, innovative, but also local things, music, movies, fun stuff, positive things, things that are going on in my life, in my peers' life, and uh, we started get, getting hit after hit, all these hits, and we kind of became popular. People knew us, and I was contacted by an industry leader. He said, I'll, I'll pay for all your college. And, uh, you know, now I have a direction, I, have a, I know what I'm going to do, and, and uh, I've got help along the way, and it's awesome. Now, me and my friends, we're, we're having a lot of fun, and, and I'm, uh, I'm a success now, a young success. And uh, I'm just telling you my story, and, and it can happen. So, blog about positive things. Okay. Um, Positive things happen. Again, something to reflect upon. Uh, let's go back to the first part of that video clip. Um, for those of you listening to the audio, you obviously didn't see it, but you might want to go onto our website to have a closer look. Um, let's start with the bad news. 
Again, the statistics are a bit worrying for the people that we may be trying to protect. We're talking about um, our children, younger brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, cousins, our friends' relations as well. Uh, 69% of recruiters and HR professionals have actually, as you saw from that first part of the clip, rejected a candidate because of what they saw. Uh, now, if that doesn't worry you about your own children or the ones that you love, then um, this is obviously not for you. What sort of things, though, would result in rejection? You need to know the answer to that um, question if you're going to protect other people. So before you move, I move on, you may want to pause the video clip and to think about it, make some notes or to chat with other people, to think about the reasons that people are rejected after the recruiters and HR professionals have looked at their social media sites. Okay, welcome back. And for those of you who didn't bother to pause but just wanted the answers, here are some of the reasons why various candidates for jobs and or for HE have been um, rejected. Again, you could pause the um, video clip and uh, read them yourselves, but I'll just run through them for those listening to the audio. You know, it's the usual thing about think before you click, in other words, before you post. Don't post inappropriate photographs, inappropriate comments, things about content about drinking, using drugs, negative comments about previous employers and or learning providers, schools, etc. Um, people who demonstrate poor communication skills, make discriminatory comments, lied about qualifications and shared confidential, confidential information from previous employers. You may well have come up with some more, but those are the ones that came up from the surveys. And you can quite see, perhaps, why people were not given the opportunity to progress with their education or the opportunity to have a job with a company that they may well like to have worked for. So, that's that side. We'll do the same here for the good news. Again, about 68-69% of recruiters and HR professionals have done the opposite. Like the second part of the video clip, and which if you're listening to the audio you listen to, uh, they've hired and offered places to candidates because of what they saw. And again, that's the encouraging thing for the people we're trying to protect. If they get it right, then, you know, Good posts bring about good events. Again, think about what sort of things would result in uh, success. Uh, and it, as I've said already, to protect others, you have to know the answers to these sort of questions. Not only what sort of things shouldn't you post, but what sort of things should you do. And again, you might want to um, pause the video clip here and have a think about it before you move on or to pause the audio and think about it before we move on. Okay, again, welcome back. Or if you've continued, here are the uh, successful candidates. Uh, they gave positive impressions of their personality and the fact that they'll fit into the organisation that they want to go to and or work for. Their profile supports their professional qualifications. Uh, it shows that they're creative, that they've got good communication skills. They're well-rounded, have got good references. I think this is LinkedIn rather than the others, posted by others. Um, and or they've received awards and accolades. Um, again, positive things bringing about positive results. It's not just you, though. It doesn't matter uh, whether those you are trying to protect use their social media uh, or not. Mentions of them and their businesses, if they have a business, will appear on social media sites. They're Online reputation isn't just what they put online. It's about how they put it online and when it is done. 
And it's also affected by what others say about them as well. Uh, there's a nice little video clip here, a bit of uh, a light-hearted advice by a Facebook user, uh, which we'll have a look at, and or if you're listening to the audio, you can have a listen to. I think it's fairly self-explanatory, quite uh, amusing, but has some serious points. Once upon a time, Facebook existed only for college students. Then these people signed up. Seven-year-old kid and his best friend. Your grandma, your mom, your high school principal, your cheating ex-boyfriend, the skank he's with now, your baby brother, Justin Bieber, your stalker, the president, your dog, your math teacher, hot vampires, your next-door neighbor, Barney, Batman, Jesus, Spider-Man, Superman, your enemy, Ronald McDonald, Pikachu, and your boss. Rule number one, avoid these people or volunteer yourself for six-hour marathon Facebook sessions to avoid stock, try to make your life seem more interesting than theirs. Rule number two. Don't say things like you hate your boss, especially if you didn't obey rule number one, don't Facebook friend your boss. Your job is too easy. Skip work to party. I love Bud Light. Basically, don't say anything that is selfish, arrogant, irresponsible, stupid, or can get you fired. <laughs> rule number three, don't upload or tag pictures like this, 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 this or this. Rule number four. Don't type like you are having a seizure or you don't know how to spell words or you think leet is cool even though you're the only person who can read it. Last okay, but not least, some, uh, rule number five, advice don't for the play younger people that you may well be trying to protect. But what are about the adults, your parents, grandparents, etc.? Aunts, uncles, other members of your family, friends and their families. What have you actually done when you've set them up on their computers to make sure that they're safe when they're using social media? Or, I suppose, on their phones, because many people are, in fact, using phones to do exactly the same. Um, there are some people who really don't care much about what people think of them in the real life, so they probably don't think they need to worry about it online. The trouble is that who you hang out with and the associations that you keep and the companies that you work for may affect whether or not you're going to continue to be or will be a success. Digital behaviour is followed by employers and abusing it can be bad for you. I mean, so I found it quite surprising that 8% of companies have actually fired somebody for abusing social media. We'll look at a, uh, a clip, or you'll listen to a clip a bit later on from the TUC that uh, gives some sound advice. Um, a good presence online can actually win you business if you've got uh, your own company and or promotions and respect. Uh, a bad or surprisingly for the worse about you. Common reputation or e-reputation issues. Um, photographs or video clips of individuals used without their permission. Even if you've never been on social media sites, doesn't mean to say that your pictures are not there. You have got friends, and I use inverted commas there for friends, because if they're posting inappropriate images, I don't think they're much of a friend. Um, but friends, families, uh, even uh, learning providers may well actually have images of you uh, and tagging you by name. Unflattering information, obviously, about individuals or characters or professional work um, will uh, be an e-reputation issue. Uh, if you don't know that they're being made, how can you challenge them? How can you ask for them to be removed? Because 
if they stay there for any length of time, uh, there are an awful lot of people who feel that uh, what's being said could well be true. There is incriminating information leaked or simple pub simply published in the process of legal action or complaint. I'm sure many of you will have heard about the jurors who were writing tweets and things on Facebook about court cases that were still ongoing. And the last but not least I've already touched upon being digitally non-existent. If you don't have a social presence in this day and age, it can be detrimental because most local businesses, most um, businesses do have a digital presence and they would expect you to be familiar with them and to have the skills to be able to add to and or contribute. What can you do? Well, the answer for many people like um, uh, accessing social media sites in learning providers is to not let you go online or to decide not to go online or to let anybody take any pictures or video clips of you. But what are you going to actually advise your parents, grandparents, aunts, etc.? The list goes on, as I've mentioned many times. Uh, what are you going to advise them to do to protect and boost their e-reputation and digital reach? Uh, before we move on, you may again want to pause and think about it uh, as to what you would tell them to boost their reputation and or to enhance it for future employment, for new courses, etc. and or for their businesses. So again, if you want to just have a pause now and restart when you're ready to see the suggestions. Okay, welcome back. I would suggest that you get them or suggest to them that they set their own re re e start again e reputation just remember the second video clip that we showed at the beginning about the young lad who was saying that he was talking about all of the good things and what he did and positive things get online establish a strong and positive presence you need to stay on top of things, and I know this sounds very sad, but for goodness sake, go and Google your own names and take note of where you actually appear online. Uh, if you've got nicknames or if you use an online presence, as I do, ACL John, then they may be tracked back to you in the future. So again, check Facebook, check Twitter, LinkedIn, and all of those other sites, and check everything that's being said about them and about you etc if you know what's being said then you know what sort of reputation you are ending up with you need to make sure that there are more good things than bad post your own re information on regular um, time scales there are things like buffer that i use that posts at times that most of the people who follow me are actually online so they're more likely to read it. Try and use search engine optimization to ensure that the articles that you post are at the top of the results when uh, they search in Google, Ask and, and other such search engines. And make sure that your accounts are secure so that hackers don't use them to post unpleasant things. A lot of young people, for example, will let their mates sign in. If you fall out with them, what's to stop them actually logging in and posting uh, comments that seem to come from you about other people and then getting you a bad reputation as being an unpleasant person? Uh, ensure that they're also aware that they shouldn't reveal full dates of birth, their address and other personal information. There are lots of people who are trying to take other people's identities or who are using uh, these, this information for other criminal purposes. You need to educate your family and friends. No matter how careful or pro proactive you are and all the people that you are supporting are, um, other friends, other members of your family, people that you've met on holiday uh, won't realise that what they do when they post photographs and comments and the like 
about you while you were on holiday and or when you have family gatherings or gatherings with friends can have an effect on how the world sees you. You need to monitor postings and tags um, of any images and videos on social media using the image search uh, and ask those people to remove the photographs and the video clips or unflattering mentions from their sites. Otherwise it can have a detrimental effect and may prevent you from having the success that you want in the future. And of course, hopefully you're protecting your youngsters and your older friends and family from these things happening to them. You need a digital strategy. Uh, look back over the last uh, three pages if you're watching it on the video or if you're looking at it on a PDF and consider appropriate ways that you can use to communicate with those that you actually want to protect. They will ask, why have, are you saying this? Why have I got to do this? Why am I doing these settings? Why shouldn't I tag people, etc.? You need to have the answers ready and convince them so that they will remain safe. And, and oh yes, while we're talking about it, what about you? Okay. Are you still young enough to think that you know it all? What are you doing about your e-reputation? Just protect your e-reputation, boost your digital presence, stay on top of what's being said about you online and develop a real digital strategy. Do it for yourself, for your professional life, for your friends, for your family and for your sanity. I'll finish uh, this uh, podcast, if you're listening to it, vidcast if you're watching it, um, by just talking about social media and you being safe in, in employment for those of you who are lucky enough to have a job and uh, who are heading towards employment. This is some advice from the TUC. It's called Just One More Click. Uh, these materials have been produced for you for Safer Internet Day 2012 by myself, John Diel. I hope you found them useful and feel free to use it within the classroom. So we'll finish with just one more click. Comfortably at your office desk You check to see who's sending you a friend request And there's the boss's picture staring back at you Oh no, what are you gonna do? Well, well, that's another fine mess I guess you're gonna blame it on the internet I think you better get back to work and make it double quick Or maybe just one last click You had so many passwords that you couldn't cope You thought you'd keep a copy on a post-it note You come back from your holiday, you can't log on Oh no! The post-it's gone! Well, well, that's another fine mess I guess you're gonna blame it on the internet I guess you better get back to work and make it double quick Or maybe just one last click Sent you a message that you shouldn't read Your curiosity won't let you let it be A little sneaky peek can surely do no harm Oh no, you're watching poodle porn Well, well, that's another fine mess I guess you're gonna blame it on the internet If you better get back to work and make it double quick Or maybe just one last click Made a movie of a drunken fool It makes you laugh until you realise it's you Your colleagues and your mother recognised it too Oh no, 20,000 views Well, well, that's another fine mess 
I guess you're gonna blame it on the internet I guess you better get back to work and make it double quick Or maybe just one more click Your boss has had you warned about your online time Your job and all its benefits are on the line So you're blogging all about it when the mail arrives Oh no, it's, it's your P45! Well, well, that's another fine mess No point blaming the internet If you ever get back to work, I think you'll find the trick Is maybe just